Hi there, welcome back to the YouTube channel. I'm back again with another deck tech. This time we're going back to Brothers War. Today's deck is probably one of the last multicolored commander ones I'm going to cover in Brothers War until Mishra comes down a little bit further in price. So I decided to have a bit of fun with this one. Um, I'm not really sure why I picked this card today, but I wanted to try it out. And I think I've actually built a reasonable deck around it. I haven't seen many other people try and do this deck as a commander, so I'm hoping it's a little bit more popular than some of the other videos I've done recently have been. But without further ado, let me show you the deck and the commander that's leading it. It's Hajar, Loyal Bodyguard. Red and green for a 3-3. That's really above the curve. I like that to start with. And you can sacrifice Hajar, Lord Bodyguard, and legendary creatures you control gain plus one, plus nothing, and gain indestructible until the end of turn. It's a really simple card. I was concerned. I'm going to be honest about it. I was concerned about this card because I was thinking, is there a lot of red-green legends that you'd want to play in a deck? And it turns out that when I started looking at my collection and going through things, there's a lot more than I thought there was going to be. So here's the deck itself. And as you can see, there's a lot of gold cards in this deck. So, just to quickly do the land bit. A um, few lands, lots of forests, lots of mountains, and all the other red-green jewels I can think of in playing. Including the gates um, from Baldur's Gate, because it seemed like a good idea. I've chucked in Reliquary Tower, I'm not sure if it's going to be any use in this deck or not. But Temple of the Folks, God will be. Along with Yavimar, Cradle of Growth. So, that's the land really. The ramp side of things, I went a little bit more easy on it than I usually do. Um, Mox Tantalite, Soul Talisman, Soul Ring, Arcane Signet, Farewell Stone, and one each of the diamonds, plus Solemn Sim. That's it really. And most of the other creatures in the deck, there's a couple of that aren't, but most of them are legendary. Because we you know we want to take advantage. We want to get them in play, get her heart her jar in play, take advantage of his sacrifice ability when people play you know, Wrath of God. Um, and so on and so forth. Now, obviously, if they decide to do um, farewell and exile everything, you're in trouble. I agree with that one. But, you know, most people don't play. I haven't seen that many people playing farewell in the commander format on MTGO recently um, or at all. So I figured it's worth a try just trying it this way. So the rest of the cards, if we haven't got Hajar in play and our things do get rushed away, we've got Alexa of Immortality. It's a red deck. Dockside's in here. I know people are getting fed up with me talking about this, but, you know, red decks have Dockside in, end of. Most of my, red, all my red decks now have Dockside in. But, you know, if you don't agree with me, you know what to do. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, leave me a comment and tell me when I'm wrong. I do respend, respond to all the comments I get on my videos. So, Felden's in as well, just so we can maybe exile the top card of our library to play some more things. And then we've got a little bit more ramp. We've got Rampant Growth. I've chucked in Sin Divines because I am a little bit concerned about people casting non-creature spells. We might as well get a little bit of damage in that way. And it's also a nice way of blowing up anything that's going to annoy us. Like, you know, if you watched my deck tech from yesterday, you know that moats in that deck. This is one way of dealing with moat. Um, any other enchantments or artifacts that are annoying us, this gets random and deals with them for us. Hence why it's here. Radha's the first of the legendary creatures. They're in the main deck. Uh, another green red one but you know you attack you get a couple of red or you can just tap it and add to green nice little bit of ramp over on the three drop side captain lannery storm for the treasure tokens krenko to make goblins when it attacks um azusa to drop all the lands out so we get those extra land drops which is really nice beast master ascension to make our legendary creatures and the things we have got on the deck even bigger because you know getting these seven attacks counters on here isn't that difficult believe it or not Cultivates in for a bit more ramp, along with growing rights of Imlatech. You know, obviously we want to get four creatures in the play and have this flip at the end on the turn we play it if we can. But if we can't, we'll just play it early, find another creature and keep hoping we get there. Having that Gaze Cradle effect is really nice in this deck. I've got Gwenna, Eyes of Gaia in as well. We've got some creatures that have got power of five or more further up the curb that are legendary. And, you know, that extra mana ramp's always nice to have. Kadoma's Reach is another part of the ramp card, along with Search for Tomorrow. And then we've got some interesting choices. I'll put Grum Gully the Generous in, because although we have got some humans in the deck, we've got a lot of non-humans, and having that plus one, plus one counter on them could be really helpful later on in the game. You know, Halal the Fire Fletcher's in as well. 
Whenever you cast a spell, if that spell was kicked, put a plus one, plus one counter on Halar. We haven't really got anything that kicks at all. But, you know, it's the way it goes. And it's a nice little 3-3 three, three for three mana with Trample. You know, hopefully we'll play it after we've got Grumgullion so it comes in as a 4-4. Four, four. So I can't complain too much. Savella, Ice Shaper, just so we can make some icy mana lifts. So it helps with the ramp. And at the end, when we get up to the mana level, we can always tap it and look at the top four cards of our library and hope we can play something without paying its mana costs. That's quite cool. Um, Chuva, Bear Claws in as well. When it attacks, it gets plus X, plus X until the end of the turn, where X is the greatest power amongst other creatures you control. A lot of the legendary creatures in this deck are bigger, so hopefully this will be a nice little pump when it does attack. Onto the four drop, I've chucked in Purifrost because, you know, might as well damage everyone when we get our creatures coming into play. Especially with Krenko, you know, all those goblins coming into play really do help. Um, a 2G in for the Blazing Sky. A bit of flying trample damage is always nice fun. And at the end of the day, if this dies, the treasure tokens will help us rebuild. Speaking of getting things killed, we've got Chain Reaction in for a little bit of board control. And we've also got the other Krenko in as well. Even if you just have this in play, you tap it, it's when it becomes un when it becomes unsummoning sick, and you get one goblin, then you keep building it up from there, which is really nice from my point of view. Torbrun, Thane of Redfell's in, because we have got a lot of red sources, so we might as well get the extra damage in from this. Goreclaw, because creatures with power four or greater cost two less to cast, so that's nice, which works really very, very nicely with Gwenna. So, you yeah, know, we'll get there and hopefully get it a bit bigger guardian project so we can have some card draw court of the bounty so we can either put some lands into play or if we still manage to be the monarch chuck one of our creatures in a play that we don't have to pay the mana cost for fantastic plan decimate i've picked up and put in the deck as well okay you have to have one of each target you have to have an artifact a creature an enchantment and land but four mana to sort of like slow down several of your opponents isn't a bad choice from my point of view and then you've got a whole run of legendary creatures that cost four mana so general marhult elves dragons in because you know creatures you control become blocked they get pumped that's nice grada warlord rad grand warlord rad is in as well uh, whenever you attack whenever one or more creatures you control attack add that much mana in any combination of blue and green and red sorry and it doesn't end it doesn't lose leave the pool until your end turn turn so that's nice Herlana and Alina, the partners are in as well, just to chucks around some more plus one, plus one counters. And giving your creatures haste is really cool. Hans Ericsson, because it's another creature. Yep. And if it does fight something, you get to put something in. Okay, fine by me. It may die quickly, but that's the way it goes. That's why Alexa of Immortality is here if we need it. Uh, Mina and then Wildborn. Extra land each turn, return target land you control to its owner's hand, target creature gets trample. Fine by me. Strag, Echo Warrior, might as well have that come into play um, and have its legendary twin token as well. Okay, there's no auras or enchant um, equipment to take advantage of the second ability, but yeah, it's a it's potentially six attacking power for four mana. I'll cope with that. I've checked in Stimulus Package. Because we will have ways of making treasures, you know, between this and Captain Krenko, um, Captain Lannery Storm, sorry, and yeah, we sack a treasure off, we get a um, green 1-1 one, one white citizen to creature token if we need a blocker instantly, so it does help a little bit. Taina, the Blood Sower as well, deals combat damage to play, create that many 1-1 one, one green sapling tokens, yep. It's going to be really hard to get this trampling over, but you know, there is some ways of pumping things up, so hopefully we'll get there. Xenigos the Reveler's in. Uh, this is one of the few Planeswalkers. I decided to play it in for the mana ramp side of it, and that's why it's here. And Rulik Mons Warren Chief. I like this card. It just makes me giggle every time I play it. You know, get that attack in, land card onto the battlefield. If we didn't put land this way, get a goblin token. Really does help when you've got things like Krenko in the deck as well. Going up to five drops. Um, Cowlicher, Fury of Avarus is in, just so we can get that extra attacking step if we need it. The Court of Ears in as well. Um, at the beginning of upkeep, we get to shock someone, and if we've got monarchy still, we get to do some serious damage to a target instead. So that's fantastic. Rona the Fire Dancer. Yep. Um, we haven't got that many instances of sorceries, but we can copy stuff and get an extra attack in. That's fine by me. Or you know, maybe copy one of our legendary permanents that we need uh, and get some extra tokens off them with some of the ones I'm coming to. So it has its advantages. 
Cura, the Boundless Sky. I will be quite happy to copy this for Riona and get those extra lands um, and put them into my hand if I need to, or create a spirit token every turn. Fine by me. Kadoma of the North Tree, just for the Shroud ability. 6 4 with Trample for 5 mana. It's fairly hard to deal with, especially with Shroud. Um, Sunstain the Falconer. I decided to go a bit old school with this one, and I like the mana ramp side of it for a couple of mana. And then Xenigos, God of Revels. This becomes a god very easily in this deck because of all the green and red um, multicolored creatures we have in the deck, so it's worth playing from my point of view. Moving on from there, uh, up to six drops. Inferno of Starmance. We get a nice big dragon that comes into play that can't be countered. Mana Reflection to help us build our mana up and make everything double, so that's cool. Multani. I haven't played Multani for a while. I decided to go back to original Dominaria for this and get Multani in the deck as well. It's quite nice if you bounce the two lands and get it from your graveyard back into hand. It means you've got a repeatable threat coming. Along with Thyla and World Sculptors in as well. So, and when, you know, we all know that World Sculptor comes into play, you get to do all the 0-1 Grant. Plain, uh, grant? <laughs> Green plant creature tokens for each basic land we control. Now, like I say, that's one of the reasons we are heavy on basics is to make sure we can abuse this a little bit. But at the end of the day, it's something we can copy with Rio and keep building up those plant tokens. And if we get the land four triggers as well, we really can't complain with the amount of plants and how big they'll get very quickly. Old Gnaw Bones in because we want treasures. We like treasures, you know. At the end of the day, if we get hit with... Um, old null bone we can always go back down to stimulus package and sack those treasures off to make some one one blockers if we really do need them omnath locus of rage um might as well have we're having this in because of the five five ability landfall's really key in this deck we will be hitting our lands quite regularly and getting some extra creatures coming to play seems like a really good idea and then when they die lightning bolts all around thank you very much <laughs> last few cards a bit more control in the form of blasphemous act You've seen this in a lot of my red decks. I think this is probably the best mass red removal spell that doesn't exile. Yeah, okay. People have got pro reds. So they get the damage prevented now. It does turn up a little bit more. But at the end of the day, Blasphemous Act, casting it for one red mana, doing one thirteen damage to everything on the board. Does mean you kind of win the games quite quickly. The Great Henge, life gain, tokens. You know, we don't can't get any tokens, but the plus one, plus ones and the actual counters. Um, card draw really does help us with this deck and finally i decided to play Galter primal hunger i wanted one more card i wanted something big and gribbly at the top end so i went with Galter. um again it's quite easy in this deck to get this into play for two green mana and it really does give your opponents headaches when that happens but that's it that's my little take on hajar um I'll be playing it on stream during this week. Uh, this video is up on a Wednesday in the UK, late on a Tuesday night in the States. So you'll probably see this at some stage the following Sunday. But yeah, you know, hit the like button. As I said before, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Leave me some comments. Let me know what I've missed out of this deck. And come and see what I'm playing on Twitch. And you'll see some of these decks that I talk about all through the channel. I keep all the decks. Even if they aren't loaded up, I can load them up quickly on MTGO. And if there's a deck you want to see that you've watched one of my videos about, jump on Twitch, let me know. I'll get it loaded up and we'll play it in the next game. So that's it for me for now. Thanks for watching this and hopefully I will see you on Twitch soon. Take care. Have a nice day. Bye.